Hey everyone, this lesson is on the relatively common condition known as familial combined hyperlipidemia. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what this condition is. We're also going to talk about the pathophysiology of this condition. We're also going to talk about signs and symptoms, how we can diagnose it, and how we can treat it. So familial combined hyperlipidemia, or FCH, is a hereditary disorder resulting in increased LDL cholesterol and triglyceride levels. So very key here is that we're going to see a lot of times both of these increase. However, you may have one of these increase, but oftentimes you may see both of these increase. Some of the cases of familial combined hyperlipidemia are autosomal dominant, but some other cases are more genetically complex. With regards to autosomal dominant inheritance, we can see in this picture here, if we have one of our parents being affected, we have a 50% chance that one of the children will be affected as well. So it only takes one copy of the affected allele to essentially cause an affected child. So oftentimes, cases where it is autosomal dominant inherited, a child who is affected must have a parent who is affected as well. And I mentioned before that it is a relatively common condition, and in fact it is. It's about 1-2% to of the general population has this condition. And it is considered the most prevalent primary dyslipidemia, so the most prevalent primary disorder of high levels of lipids or high levels of fats in the blood. And we generally see higher rates of this in Hispanic populations. This condition accounts for approximately 33 to 50 percent of familial causes of coronary heart disease. And it can cause upwards of 10% of premature coronary heart disease as well. And this condition is the most common cause of increased triglyceride levels. So if we were to see increased triglyceride levels in an individual, the most common genetic cause is this condition. And this condition is also associated with other issues as well, including impaired glucose tolerance, diabetes, hypertension, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So the pathophysiology of this condition depends on the mutation involved. And as I mentioned before, some cases can be genetically complex. So there can be a lot of phenotypic heterogeneity with a lot of individuals with this condition. And again, that depends on the mutation involved. Some cases we see abnormally elevated production of ApoB100 associated with very low density lipoproteins or VLDL. And this is a hepatic derived process, so it occurs in the liver. And in some cases, we see an imbalance between de novo lipogenesis, the new formation of lipids in our body, and the breakdown of lipids in beta oxidation. So there can be an imbalance between making too many lipids and not breaking down enough. And some cases, we see abnormal lipoprotein lipase activity. So there's some issue with the lipoprotein lipase enzyme leading to decreased activity of the enzyme. So in these cases, we see a mutation in the LPL gene. And with regards to individuals with this phenotype, they often have higher triglyceride levels. So there's multiple genes involved in this condition that can lead to slightly different phenotypic presentations, but many times it is very similar. We see high triglycerides and high LDL cholesterol. So what are some of the findings? So some of the findings, we'll talk about laboratory findings first. So we talked about it before, increased LDL cholesterol, and they're described as small and dense. We see increased triglyceride levels as well, and we often see decreased HDL or the good cholesterol. And a lot of times the cholesterol and triglyceride levels can vary over time, even within the same individual. So the clinical features are due to the increased cholesterol and triglyceride levels. Some of these include xanthelasma. So xanthelasma is the fatty deposition. So you can see this yellowing deposition around the eyes. That's xanthelasma. We can also see corneal arcus. So it's essentially a ring of fat around the iris, around the outer edge of the iris. These individuals can also be obese and they can have premature coronary heart disease as we mentioned before. And as I mentioned previously, there's a lot of other associations with diabetes, impaired glucose tolerance, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. With this condition, it's very important that we talk about tendon xanthomas. There are no tendon xanthomas in familial combined hyperlipidemia, as opposed to other conditions like familial hypercholesterolemia, where we do see tendon xanthomas. So how do we make the diagnosis and how do we treat it? So the diagnosis of familial combined hyperlipidemia requires a family history. As I mentioned before, a lot of the laboratory findings can vary over time. So the diagnosis can be difficult to make based on just one measurement of cholesterol and triglycerides. So if we see a parent of 
of our patient who also has high LDL cholesterol and high triglycerides, and our patient also has LDL to ApoB ratio of less than 1.2, that can help us make the diagnosis. So a normal value of LDL to ApoB ratio is greater than 1.4, but individuals with familial combined hyperlipidemia have a ratio of less than 1.2. Once we make the diagnosis, how do we treat it? So we want to target LDL levels to less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. And we want to do it as young as possible to help reduce the risk of coronary heart disease. So we use statins. Statins are HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors. We use high-intensity statins, which means they are high-dose statins. And we often use atorvastatin, 80 milligrams daily, or rosuvastatin, 40 milligrams daily to treat this condition. So that was a quick lesson on familial combined hyperlipidemia. If you want to learn more about other lipid disorders, including familial hypercholesterolemia, please check out my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel. And as always, Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.